Okay, good morning. Well, as you can see, I've opted for a safer, quieter environment than yesterday morning. It is Wednesday, April the 24th. And uh, it's a little bit cloudy, but we've had some wonderful sunshine already this morning, and it's in the 60s. And I just say, thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go into the beautiful King James Bible, the book of Leviticus, and this chapter 24. And have you noticed how just about every chapter in Leviticus starts off with, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure olive oil beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually. Without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, shall Aaron order it from the even until the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. Thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenths deals shall be in one cake. And thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row upon the pure table before the Lord. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat it in the holy place. For it is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire for a perpetual statute. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out from among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Shelemeth, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in ward, that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that have cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall, sh shall certainly stone him as well the stranger as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. And he that killeth a beast shall make it good beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. And he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. You shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger, as for one of your own country. I am the Lord your God. And Moses spoke unto the children of Israel, that they should bring forth him that had cursed out of the camp, and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. Harsh treatment, you might say. They didn't have law and order in those days. They had a system whereby they governed themselves and looked after themselves. I mean, I'm talking about the Israelites in the wilderness. And so they relied entirely upon the word of God to guide them in all things. And Moses and Aaron were to conduct these matters 
as conduits of God relaying this to the people. Why did God have this recorded for us to read? He is an unchanging God. If you blaspheme God, then you will face death. Maybe not death here on earth, but you will face the second death. If you are able to blaspheme God, you don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would convict you to the point where you just could not even begin to blaspheme God. So without the power of the Holy Spirit in you, and you blaspheme God, and you do not repent of your ways, and ask for forgiveness, then you will surely die the second death. That is eternal separation from the Shekinah glory of God. That is perpetual, everlasting, eternal hell. That is a scary concept. If you know of anybody who is of this mindset, then I command you today to pray for that person because that person will burn in hell. I command you to get down on your knees and pray most sincerely with weeping tears rolling down your face that you can help instill the salvation into that person, that you can ask for God to bring someone into that person's life, a message, something. We all came to God in many different ways, but you pray to God and ask for that person to be saved because that's one of the blatant ones. Then there's the not so blatant ones. Then there's the ones who will be guilty of apostasy in the end times. They claim to be Christians. They go through all the motions, but they haven't truly given the heart to the Lord. Pray for them as well. You may not know them by name, but they exist. Pray for them. They are out there. It has been prophesied that these people will exist and that there will be apostasy in the church. You cannot have an apostate Christian. It's impossible. David Jeremiah talks about this extensively. Apostasy in the church is those who truly have not given their hearts to the Lord. There is a difference between lip service and speaking with your heart. And the final price is death. So chapter 24 of Leviticus can remind us of that. Although that person, this man, faced physical death, he would have faced, he will face, he has faced eternal separation from God. The second death. And we don't want that for anybody, do we? And in this day and age, in these in this foreshadowing of end times, if we're not even there yet, in the foreshadowing of end times, the way we see events unfolding around the world, there is a great imminence. Let alone of our own deaths and passing from this world to the next. But truly, there is a great imminence of the rapture. Now tonight, Pastor Ken is going to begin his series on the great disappearance I'll be reading from the book, and Pastor Ken is going to be explaining and, and deliberating on this. And it is important. He is giving away 50 copies of this book. This is not for you, although we urge you to read it, to fully understand what is at stake here. But it's for those that do not rapture. It is a handbook for those that are going to be left behind. And you will understand more as we work through it over the next few weeks. But it is of <laughs> utmost urgency that you understand what is about to take place. 
a lot of pastors, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians have turned a blind eye to the book of Revelation. I had one friend in particular who was a pastor and he said, you know, Chris, it's so complicated. We just don't talk about it. Well, we're talking about it. We need to know. We need to know because it is going to happen. Everything else that was foretold in the Bible has come to pass. Now these end times prophecies are going to come to fruition. That is a guarantee from God. That is a promise from God. It is going to happen. You need to be at church tonight. Wednesday, 200 Church Road, Otana, PA, Mountaintop Ministries, 7 o'clock. Be there. You need to to be there and to understand what is about to happen. Well, after all that, <laughs> have a great day. Remember, we live in hope. As Christians, this is a good thing. This is the final acknowledgement of God's love for us. When the rapture takes place, he is calling his church home. Jesus Christ is coming for his bride. Hallelujah. This is a time of celebration. Because he loves you. And I love you too. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.